All right, March 4th, diving right in to the art of war. We are in chapter eight, verse four. The general who thoroughly understands the advantages that accompany variation of tactics knows how to handle his troops. So a realization that came to me today as I've hired on more people is that the procedures and processes that are already in place at big firms and the experience that you get um, by working those grunt jobs growing up is exactly what prepares you to make those processes and procedures for your own company. And so you may not realize it, but those grueling eight to 10 hour shifts you're working right now are all to drill in something into your head about knowing exactly what to do and the calls to make when you're in a position to have to make those calls. Master Sun says, out of an alternate transla translation, therefore generals who know all possible adaptations to take advantage of the ground know how to use military forces. They continue, which we didn't cover, if generals do not know how to adapt advantageously, even if they know how the lay of the land, they cannot take advantage of it. If they rule armies without knowing the arts of complete adaptivity, adaptivity even if they know what there is to gain, they cannot get people to work for them. So let's just hop back over to the original version and continue where we left off to catch up and stay congruent. Verse five, the general who does not understand these may well be acquainted with the configuration of the country, yet he will not be able to turn his knowledge to practical account. So actually that's really good that they kind of put those two together in the alternate translation because that forces us to say, you can sit there and study the book of business and go to college all you want to go and learn everything you can. But at the end of the day, you just have to start and you just have to do it. And so just because you have the book knowledge doesn't necessarily mean you're going to adapt in the real world. But any good general is going to have both. So any good general, any good owner of a business, any good leader is going to go through all manners of knowledge which he is capable of learning before he encounters that situation much like we're doing here between the daily stoic and the art of war where we're trying to take these ancient teachings listen to a modern day perspective on it provide our own anecdotal perspective on it to kind of give us four different ways to look at something and to attack it so that we can make the right decisions and so Let's go over to GLN now, following up, reflecting on Master Sun's saying, even if you know the configuration of the land, if your mind is inflexible, you will not only fail to take advantage of the ground, but may even be harmed by it. It is important for generals to adapt in appropriate ways. If you can change with the momentum of forces, then the advantage does not change. So the only ones who get hurt are others. Therefore, there is no constant structure. If you can fully comprehend this principle, you can get people to work, right? So this is why discipline equals freedom, right? This is why I think Jocko says that is because there is no structure. So you have to provide it. You have to bring order to chaos. And when you do that, it, you learn how to do it in every single situation. Adaptation means things like avoiding a convenient route when it is realized that it has features that lend themselves to ambush, not attacking a vulnerable army when it is realized that the army is desperate and bound to fight to the death. All right, so here he's recapping some of the earlier verses. So go back to the previous videos um, to catch up on that. Not besieging an isolated and vulnerable city when it is realized that it has abundant supplies, powerful weapons, smart generals, and loyal administrators. So there's no telling what might happy happen. <laughs> Not fighting over territory that could be contested when it is realized that even if it were won, it would be hard to keep. It would be of no use anyway, and it would cost people life and limb, not following the directives of the civilian government, which ordinarily should be followed when it is realized that there would be disadvantage and consequent harm in direction from behind the lines. He says a lot here, but... Let's focus back in. These adaptations are made on the spot as appropriate and cannot be fixed in advance. Another very important part of this. Greed for what can be gained means taking any shortcut, attacking any isolated army, besieging any insecure city, contesting any territory that can be taken, taking command of any serviceable army. This is greed. 
If you are greedy for what you can get from these things and do not know how to adapt to changes such as outlined above, not only will you be unable to get people to work, you will destroy destroy the army and wound the soldiers. And so it is important for us to go through all of this stuff and think about it. What are we doing? Are we conquering simply to conquer? Are we conquering for our ego? Are we being greedy for our ego? Are we picking and choosing our battles? Are we choosing to siege or not siege the right cities, right? Um, and the cities, all of this is a metaphor for are we taking on the appropriate tasks? Are we going to war with ourselves, with our spouses over something that might be well fortified, right? We have to ask ourselves these questions. What are we being greedy for? All right, and now let's go to the Daily Stoic to find out from March 4th from Ryan Holiday and Stephen Hanselman what's in store for us and see how we can tie in the Western stoicism of the European upbringing, essentially Greek, European, um, all of the philosophers, Roman, uh, in, into the Eastern art of war and warfare and strategy. So let's see what kind of interesting mix we get today. March 4th, awareness is freedom. Discipline equals freedom. So awareness of the situation, awareness to know, Okay, the person is free who lives as they wish, neither compelled nor hindered nor limited, whose choices aren't hampered, whose desires succeed, and who don't fall into what repels them. Sounds a lot like this person is very adaptable to every situation and has an ability to compel themselves instead of be compelled, hindered, or limited and make those choices to that one person. Who wishes to live in deception, tripped up, mistaken, undisciplined, complaining, in a rut? no one but yet we live in a society that tricks so many people into this very spot these are base people who don't live as they wish and so no base person is free epictetus discourses 4.1.1 to 3a wow you know i'm not really quite sure what the slang term based means but like when you said something is so based i i i Maybe I'm getting this completely out of context because I don't know, but to me it feels like it's so simple everybody knows it. It's so simple that it's overlooked. It's so simple that it kind of hurts that it's the truth. It's so simple that it just is what it is. Maybe I'm wrong about what that slang term means, but you know... You have to realize that some things the majority of people do are what every person does and what this is up here un undisciplined tripped up mistaken complaining in a rut that's so easy for for the average to be um and so it's easy to do average things to get an average outcome and so what we're trying to do is to live as we wish and not be compelled nor hindered or limited and all of that stuff like you know whose desires succeed and who don't fall into what repels them so don't live a lie. Be honest with yourself. And that's the hardest thing for many of us to do is to be honest with ourselves about our shortcomings. But I promise you, the sooner you admit that you're not as smart as you think you are, you're not as strong, you're not as fast, you're not as good as you think you are, and you're just another person, the better, the sooner you're going to come out of that statistical average. Because the average person thinks that they're smarter than everybody else. It is sad to consider how much time many people spend in the course of the day doing things they have to do. Not necessary obligations like work or family, but the obligations we needlessly accept out of vanity or ignorance. Pay down that ignorance debt, right? Consider the actions we take in order to impress other people or the links we'll go to fulfill urges or sate desires we don't even question. In one of his famous letter, letters, Seneca observes how often powerful people are slaves to their money, to their positions, to their mistress, even as was legal in Rome, to their slaves. No slavery is more disgraceful, he quipped, than one which is self-imposed. We see this slavery all the time. A codependent person who can't help but clean up after a dysfunctional friend, government, boss, micromanager, or someone else who sweats every penny, the countless causes, events, and get-togethers were too busy to attend, but agree to anyway. Take an inventory of your obligations from time to time. How many of these are self-imposed? How many of them are truly necessary? Are you as free as you think? 
such a great question to ponder because when we kind of were in the art of war and we were talking about, you know, the, such is the system that, that so many create are actually kind of like back to the beginning. Like, are you becoming a slave because are you becoming a slave to your desires? Are you becoming a slave because it's easy? Are you becoming a slave to consumerism because it's what everybody's doing? Are you becoming a slave to these base temptations that cause us to be animals and humans and what we are? The further you stray away from that higher being, that higher self and striving to continually be better and improve the world around us. Because again, that's what stoicism is about. It's about not giving into emotion. It's about winning those daily victories of the simple tasks over and over, which keep us human and not animal and keep our thoughts and our brains and ourselves in that higher order self. That is us. That is human. That is to be given this gift of intelligence and conscience. And so part of that is, I'll go back to saying, being able to humble yourself and say, you know what, I'm not as smart as I thought I was. I'm not as fast. I'm not as sneaky. I'm not as whatever. And just admit that you are where you're at in life. And the sooner that you refrain from the competition and you start learning that the art of war is simply to live in peace and to live free, as, as the Stoics say, the sooner that you can realize that you just are.